It's your resume that validated your competence. It's the phone screen that validates your competence. When you go into the interview, it becomes a little bit more about compatibility. We've talked about that in the past, but we don't really talk much about the phone screen. And that's what I want to address in today's video. So if you're new to the channel, my name is Bill Benoist. I'm a certified professional career coach here in Silicon Valley. And I got some tips for you regarding the phone screen that's going to help you get past that and onto the first stage of the interview. So number one, you need to be prepared. And by doing this, I want not only that you have your resume in front of you, but I want you to go bullet point by bullet point down that resume and create a soar or a star story behind each one of those accomplishments. Now, is your resume reading like a job description or does it have accomplishments and do you even know what a soar or a star story is? If you're new to the channel, you may not, and so I want to direct you to a free master class that I have on my website, completely free. It goes about an hour and a half long. It's going to go over the resume and also interviewing and interview questions, but it's really key that you develop a story behind each one of those bullet points because what this recruiter is going to be doing is they need to validate your competence. They need to make sure that you're the right candidate before they move on to the interviewing stage with that hiring manager. And so they're going to ask you about various accomplishments that you have on your resume. So not only keep it in front of you, but I also want you to be prepared with some sore stories, which is a situation, the obstacle, the action you took, the result that came about, or star stories, the situation, the task or responsibility you had, the action and the results that came about that. Have that prepared. Number two, I want you to have your job description in front of you as well because you need to match your accomplishment statements to parts of that job description. These should be a real good match and I want you to be able to, to refer to that as you're talking to the recruiter. So not only your resume in front of you, but also that job description in front of you. Number three, I want you to dress business casual. This is really important because it's going to help you get in the mindset there. You're going to feel a lot more confident if you've dressed up a little bit in a business casual versus wearing shorts and a t-shirt as you're talking to that recruiter. Now we're not talking about a Zoom call, I'm talking about just simply the phone interview or the phone screen. So they're not going to see you, but I still want you to be dressed up. It's going to help you get into that correct mindset. Number four, you got to be focused on this. And boy, this was one of my biggest pet peeves. And that is, you know, trying to take a phone screen while you're driving a car or there's, you know, children in the background, there's other activities going on and you can't be focused. So make sure that you're in a quiet environment where you are completely focused on speaking with that recruiter because otherwise they can tell. I can I, I can't tell you how many times that that happened with me where that person, I pretty much just cut the uh, interview short and uh, that individual was never considered after that. If they didn't give me the courtesy of planning for that phone screen, then forget it. You know what? They're, they're just not somebody that I'm even going to uh, consider moving forward. And Finally, I want you to make sure that you're smiling. You've probably heard this before, that smiles go through that phone. So make sure that you smile as you're talking. So those are five tips, but what can you expect from that recruiter? You know, again, most of the questions are going to be validating your competence, but probably the one question that may come up, and that is a behavioral type of question, tell me a little bit about yourself. So if you're asked by that, and again, I do have a free masterclass on my website that goes over interviewing questions like, tell me about yourself, what are your salary expectations, what you think your biggest weakness is, behavioral type of questions, a couple of more. It goes about an hour and a half long. Make sure that you check it out. I'll put a link to it in the upper right hand corner, but you need to prepare for that question. Now, finally, they're going to conclude the interview with asking, do you have any questions for me? And this is your opportunity to see if this is the right fit for you, whether it be the position or the company. So a couple of questions that you may want to consider asking at this stage is number one, why is this position open? Okay, 
are they growing or maybe the last person was uh, terminated. And you know, this could be also an indication that there is a lot of turnover in that company and you gotta kinda wonder why that is. So find out why that position is open. Another question that you may wanna ask is how soon they want to fill this position. So this would be a, also a good indicator of you know what the urgency is out there and give you kind of a time frame of when you can expect that they're going to be making a decision. And then a final question that you may want to consider asking, and that is, are you up against any internal candidates? You know, I believe by asking this question, it also gives you a little bit of an understanding as to, you know, what the interview process is going to be and who your competition is out there. So, I hope you found this video informative and useful, and if you haven't already done so, make sure that you subscribe to this channel, hit that bell notification as I do upload new career tips and strategies every Tuesday, and I'd hate for you to miss anything. Thanks for stopping by, and I look forward to seeing you next week. Take care.